Hey, it's time for another lesson in video editing. We are going to be looking at effects and color correction today, which is really the fun one. I've been looking forward to doing this lesson in particular because we get to have a lot of fun with the footage and we've gotten over the basics already so you kind of know how editing works in a uh, professional editing environment. And now we can have some fun and play around and do some neat things with video. So let's get started with Final Cut. We are going to work in Final Cut and then we are going to move on to Premiere. So here I have got our project up from yesterday, but I've I moved the clips around because we had some kind of like not the best footage to work with uh, in the timeline before, so I've put two coffee related clips in here and we're gonna look at adding effects. Now you can add effects in a couple of ways. You can do it globally or you can do it specifically to the footage on the timeline. And we talked about how if you edit anything in the viewer that you bring up in uh, uh, from your file browser, any effects you apply to it, when you drag those, in, when you drag that footage into the timeline, it's always going to be there. So we're going to look at just doing it to these, this particular instance of this clip, um, which is the Starbucks 07 adding cream, which you can see over here. But this is only going to affect the clip in the timeline. So I'm double clicking on it, and I'm bringing it up in the viewer, and you'll see we have a bunch of tabs up here. We've looked at these before. One's video, one's stereo, one's filters, and one's motion. So one of the main things we can do uh, for, for basic effects is use the motion tab, and we're going to go over that first. Then we're going to take a look at filters, um, where we can add special effects from the effects menu under video filters, and then we'll look at adding those and color correction, and then we'll also take a look at adding things like titles and how that's done. And we'll do all of that here and in and Premiere as well. So in the motion tab, this is what everything does. Scale is, believe it or not, the scale of the uh, video. And as you can see, I'm scaling it up and down like that. Now let's say I wanted to start with this zooming in. So we've got it really small there. I'm going to move to the first frame of the video here. And I'm going to set a keyframe by clicking this little diamond. And then I'm going to move up, let's say, right here. It's, that's half of a second, about and I'm gonna put in 100 so that goes back up to oh wait no we want 133 percent because this isn't big enough there we go so now it's that big and I've set a keyframe on both of these so now when I play this it zooms up now this video is unrendered so it's not very smooth um, but you can do a whole lot of other things like set a keyframe for the rotation and we'll just set that to be, Oop, there we go, let's widen that up a little bit and move, we can use these arrows to move between keyframes when they're set. So I'm just using the one for scale that we already set so I know I'm going to be in the exact same place when I set this to zero. And so now when this renders, and we're going to just render a little bit of this right now so you can see what it actually looks like. This should just take a couple of seconds to render the part of it. The nice thing about Final Cut when you're rendering, if you just want to preview a portion, you can let it render um, until it gets, you know, as far as it needs to get. We're going to let it get to 10% here because that should probably be enough. And then when you hit cancel, it'll still keep the part that it actually just rendered, which is the part we want to look at. So you can see there, it spins in. Maybe a little too much spinning because that's kind of harsh. So you can do other things in here too. Like if you wanted to crop, you can crop from the left, crop from the right, you can crop from the bottom, you get where this is going. But if you set a feather, for example, when you do the crop, it's gonna you can see how that edge is blurring a little bit. So if you want to have that effect, you can do that too. Um, additionally, you can um, change the aspect ratio of the video. We don't want to mess with that. And you can do some distortion, which we won't get into, but, well, maybe just a little bit. There, see? That's how it goes. Um, opacity, you can set the opacity of the video. This doesn't do a whole lot of good here. You don't want to be using this for fades. We'll get into fades in a minute. But you don't want to be using this for fades because that's fading from uh, nothing. 
And so that makes the video transparent. So if I were to throw this video, I'm just going to unlink the audio in the video. If I was going to throw this video right here and bring up those, uh, those motion effects again and set the opacity, you have that transparency there. So that's not a good thing unless that's what you're looking for. Um, but Final Cut has built-in effects, as we saw in the past two lessons, to dissolve and all of that. So technically, you could do it like this. You could do a fade like this, but it's a lot more work, and you don't really need to. But it is an option. Um, so I'm just going to move everything back into place there, lock those two things together again. And uh, let's take a look at what else we have. If, for example, you are, um, you know, showing the background here, uh, you can use a drop shadow. Now, if I enable this drop shadow, we're not really going to see it because it's black on black. But if I were to change the color, you can see, you'll see, um, maybe you'll see it. The drop shadow popping up. Oh, I have to select that. There we are. There's the drop shadow. And, and I can make it softer, reduce the opacity, blah, blah, blah. It's a drop shadow. You've seen that before. Motion blur makes the video blur when it's moving. This is uh, you know four samples so it's not necessarily as nice as yeah so there's the motion blur that we might want so the more samples the more uh, I don't know if that's realistic but detailed I guess it will be this takes a long time to render so beware of that motion blur is not necessarily the quickest thing in the world but you've got it if you want it and then speed is the speed of the clip and we're not going to get into that one so that's what you can do in the motion tab and those are pretty basic motion effects. Now, there's a lot more you can do when you actually start editing with filters. Filters can be found in the effects panel, and you can do this for video and audio. We're going to mainly concentrate on video, but I'll take a quick look at what the audio filters are. These are all pretty standard for video editing applications. You have blur if you want to blur stuff. Um, you can add borders. You can um, mess with color channels. You can color correct. We're going to be taking a deeper dive into that. Um, and there are a whole bunch of things. I mean, there, there are special effects like, for example, if you were to do, I believe Dazzle will make things kind of lighted and shiny. Yeah, so it takes the highlights of the picture and adds some stars to it. And then let's just take a look at this effect while we're here. So you can go into filters and now you'll see there's this Dazzle thing that you just added. And uh, you can adjust the amount. I'm going to adjust how bright it is. That might see like all the way up here. Kind of bright. You just uh, apply it a little with a little more moderation. It's not so weird looking. You can choose the threshold. Um, and this is just saying this is uh, this is the tolerance of, of, you know, it's like how much how much can I apply this effect? How many, uh, what's the range of, of, of highlights I can use um, is what the plugin is asking. And then, I don't know what spike count is, I'm assuming that's the number of stars that show up. Maybe? I don't know. Um, and then you have cropping here too. Uh, that I don't know what it does. I actually don't use this plugin, but we're just kind of looking at the, uh, at the options. And mix will reduce um, basically the opacity of the effect. So you can say it's, it's basically mixing it in. So this is zero, and that is the effect cannot be seen at all. And then you move it up the line and that's how intense it is. So if you apply these effects and you don't want them entirely visible then you can mix it in and out. And those, these are for the most part pretty standard. Um, the mix is something you'll see in everything. You'll generally see a threshold control for a lot of effects. I'm going to take a look at one more just to kind of get an idea of how these things differ. Um, let's see what we got here. So what's a good one to go with? Um, Let's go with an eight-point garbage map. This is this is something you might actually use. If you um, uh, let's say you're you're trying to put two people on the screen at one time, and you want to and, and you record it and and uh, that person's the same person. So if I wanted to have me next to me in a scene, um, obviously there aren't two of me. Well, I guess not. Obviously, you don't know that, but I do, and uh, I I can guarantee there's only one of me, and. If I wanted to talk to myself on video, I'd need to shoot myself on one side of the screen and then not on the other side of the screen. And then I can combine those two video frames with a garbage mat. And so to demonstrate this, I'm going to unlock this again. I'm going to move it over here. And so 
garbage mats are really easy because you might think like people green screen when they uh, um, when they edit uh, two people together, but that's really not necessary. You can just shoot it on two parts of the screen and then and then use a garbage mat to say, oh, I only want this part to show up. So I can set this here. Let's say we just want the coffee cup. So I'm going to say point 0.1. I click on that little plus there. Move this over here. I'm going to click on point 0.8 because that one, we want to move that one over too. Um, and point 0.7. Oops. Okay, what did I just do? Let's get back over there. All right. Try that one more time. Point 0.7. And you can see kind of what I'm doing. I'm just basically cropping very specifically uh, using these points, and they're marked. You can see the marked here. And that won't actually render into your video. That's just for your help. Um, but if you want to hide the labels, you can click Hide Labels. Um, I'm going to grab point 0.4, move it over here. And lastly, point 0.5. And I click too soon. Keep doing that. OK. And point 0.5 and move it right there. And so now I've got this and I'm going to just smooth the edges out a little bit, which you generally want to do and add a feather. Um, so normally this, you know, if you had two people next to each other, this would be great because then it would blend in because uh, the light's not always exactly the same. Even if you're shooting exactly the same frame, like when you move to the other side of the screen, a new shadow is going to be cast and so on. So you have to pay attention to that and try to avoid it, but feathering can help. And then if I go back into motion and I want to set the center point, I can click that and I can move the center over here. And now I have video on top of video. This looks absolutely terrible. So you don't want to do what I'm doing right now. But if you do want to use an eight point garbage mat or a four point garbage mat, that might be all you need if you're just kind of splitting the screen in half. That's an easy way to do it. And so that's another one of the effects that you can use. Now, let's see if I can undo this enough to get it back to normal. Um, I'm just going to move this back over here, lock the layers again, it's not too late to go back, and let's get rid of that uh, garbage mat filter up here in the viewer. Goodbye. So you've got lots of effects, they do all sorts of things. Um, some other uh, important ones might be if you have interlaced video and you're editing in progressive, you'll want to use a deinterlace filter to get rid of that. Um, there are other things that you can do like smooth cam if you have got a really jerky camera this will help smooth it out you might have noticed in iMovie and other um, uh, less complicated editors I guess you can call them uh, beginner editors maybe uh, you'll find that they have a smooth camera feature built in a lot and this is kind of the same thing it's just a plug-in and you can uh, and it will zoom in on your video and you'll lose some quality but it will try to stabilize it um, so there are things like that. You can sharpen things up if they're not sharp enough. Um, and then you can use things like blur. Well, this is the last one we're going to take a look at. I'm going to use Gaussian blur. Waking you know, up from getting hit on the head or something, or, they're, or we're moving into a, um, a, into a flashback moment. I mean, whatever reason you'd want to blur your footage is your own. But what we're, we're going to look at this for one particular reason, and that is you can use keyframes in your effects too. So I'm going to say... I want this coffee cup to start blurring out, and so I'm going to set a keyframe there, and then I'm going to move the timeline. I can move it up here as well as down in the timeline. You'll see it moves in both places. Set another keyframe, and then I'm going to blur the crap out of this. Goodbye. We can't even see you now. So as you'll see, we start here, and as I go frame by frame, very slowly, that blur gets bigger. Um, and so that's how you can use keyframing in your effects to create even cooler effects. And that's how you'd go from no blur to a lot of blur. Um, you can also, you know, you can do neat things where you're moving around the blur and it's jumping in and out to be like someone's focusing their eyes or a camera's focusing or whatever. It doesn't look at, like a camera necessarily because the blur is too perfect, but you get the idea. So that's how Gaussian blur works. Now we're going to take a look at color correction. And this is going to be pretty much the same in uh, the, the effects that we've done so far we'll look at in Premiere as well. But the, the color correction is going to be something that's going to be almost identical in both because we're going to be looking at color correction using a piece of software that I really love called Magic Bullet Colorista. And this is made by Red Giant Software, and it is more expensive than I remember. I must have gotten a discount on this. Um, but it's 300 bucks, and it is a great color, a great color corrector. 
let me just show you why. To demonstrate, I'm going to need a little help from Final Cut's Color Correction Filter. We're going to use Color Corrector 3-Way because it gives us more options and it's more close to what you'll see in Magic Bullet Colorista. So here we are. This is not great. If we want a visual option though, that's better. Here we are, this is what Final Cut gives you. So these are your blacks, your mids, and your whites. If you adjust these levers here, this will adjust uh, the, uh, how, the, how much uh, lighter or darker it gets. So this will be lighter. That will lighten up, brighten up your mids, and this will darken them. Um, this will do the same for your highs and lows. So if I thought, for example, this footage was a little dark in the lows, which it is because you can't really see what's going on in the background, not that this is going to give us any more detail, but I can brighten up the back a little bit up here and then move it down here. But as you're seeing when I'm doing this, eh, it doesn't look very good. I could also brighten this up, move this down, and then you get a more contrasty look. If I wanted to add some more color, I can just pull this meter up like that. Um, and you get some color effects. But the thing is, Final Cut's color corrector kind of, it, it doesn't really um, work that well. I mean, if you bring in these blues here, it just, it just turns the black blue. Um, and so you don't get really realistic or useful color changes. You just get, it, it's just like you're slapping some color on it. Um, so I don't like it so much. And um, this is why I like uh, Magic Bullet Colorista, because it doesn't have that problem. Now, there's a lot you can do with this. You'll see tons and tons of options here. Um, this is just the primary part, and you can, you can actually color correct in several phases with the new version. Um, but we're not going to get into that. And this is also another reason I like 2UP, because it fits. If you, uh, if you use the standard thing at, on a laptop, it will cramp the color corrector like this, and you can't move this over generally. It gets, yeah, it gets stuck like that, so you have to make the window bigger. So it's really bad for color correction if you, if you, if you don't have enough room or you're using a plugin that takes up a lot of space. So this is what happens when we move these things. These are the same levers that we we're looking at in Final Cut that this goes up to brighten. And I also like it better because you can actually see the, the, uh, the tone. So that's brightening that up, and then I can bring the darks down. And you can see already... Um, I'm adding that contrast that's already a, little, a bit more realistic. If I wanted to brighten up back here, I can do that, but one of the things that's really nice, I'm just going to, here's the reset, there we go. Um, that little X up there resets your effects. One of the things I uh, want to take a look at is the primary exposure. This is if your footage is overexposed or underexposed, this will attempt to fix that, so that's really nice. Um, and then also if you lose information in the highlights, this will bring, try to bring them back. So you have a few more options in here, but the color correction is just tends to be of a higher quality. So I'm going to bring this up, I'm going to bring this down a little bit, and, uh, and then just like with any other color correction, if you want to make it more, uh, if you want to add another tone to it to kind of color in that footage, you can. I'm going to make this a bit warmer. I'm going to make the highlights a little colder and then the low, the shadows, warm and I'm just pulling that dot up into there until I get what I want um, now we're not doing any fancy color correction here but what my goal is, this is a, an effect a, a more uh, a, a vintage -y film look that I like to use uh, for photos a lot which j just means bringing up uh, the blues and uh, and and uh, in the highlights, and then bringing up the shadows uh, as reds and warmer colors. So it's kind of got that cross process to it. Um, and we'll just bring this up a little bit. Ooh, not that much. Sometimes this is a little hard to control. Bring that up a little bit. There we are. Um, and so you can mess around with this to get the footage where you want. I'm not an expert color corrector. I have you know some knowledge on how it works. Uh, so I'm not going to get into any serious things like working with a histogram and all the amazing color meters you have in professional editors, um, which you can find in uh, when you go into color correction mode, I believe it will show you all that stuff, your video scopes, so you can see what's going on. Um, I don't like this for color correction mode because it cramps 
the actual color correction tools, but you know your video scopes are what you're looking for um, in that mode. So we're gonna go back to two up really quick and move that around. And that's you know I mean that's basically how you color correct. You choose you look at the you look at your picture. You say hey this is a little colder or warmer or there's too much green um, than I want, and then you take the dot in the relevant area. You can tell generally if it's in a shadow or not. Like this footage is a little cold and the shadows are a little cold, so I'm going to say, okay, well the color that it, the color that I'm seeing too much of is blue. So if I add more blue, this is going to look worse. Um, and if I want to if I want to warm it up a bit, I'm just going to go to the opposite side of the color wheel. Um, and you can use that color to neutralize uh, the the uh, effect of the coldness. And if you do it too much, then you'll start to see that warmth because then it will start to saturate the shadows or whatever you're adjusting. Um, with that color, and it will it will overtake the blues and start to dominate. So you want to only use it uh, enough to neutralize it unless you want a warmer effect. So as you can see, blue neutralized it with red, and it looks a little bit more natural. So that is essentially how color correction works. So much more you can do. There's so much more. And uh, we're not going to get into all of that right now because this is just a basics lesson. But when you're color correcting and you want to, and you know, you maybe shot something a little bit worse than you would have liked and you need to get the color back in order or you just want to apply some sort of effect because you want, you want warmth or coldness to the footage to convey some sort of emotion, that's what color correction is for. So those are basic effects in Final Cut. We are going to take a look at just one more thing and that's transitions. Actually, we're going to take a look at two more things because we've got to look at the audio too, but we're just going to do a quick look at that. Um, we looked at transitions a little bit yesterday, um, and I just want to take a quick look at what else you've got here. There are lots of things. I pretty much only use the cross dissolve unless um, I'm doing a video editing tutorial in which I've been having fun with some weird uh, transitions just for the hell of it uh, in this lesson and the previous lessons. Um, but you can. There are a lot of things you can do. You can do um, page peels. You can do. Uh, I really need to turn off growl. I got a lot of people contacting me right now. Um, You've got oval iris, you've got uh, point iris, and these are like, these are, uh, this is easier to just show you. Um, oh, but I don't have this insufficient media. Basically, it's a shape that, trans a shape will grow or shrink to transition to the next uh, frame. I guess that wasn't that hard to say. Uh, but basically, you have a bunch of stuff you can spin on a cube. There are all things that you're probably not going to use that much. The cross dissolve is the main one, and that is why the cross dissolve is the default effect. You can clear the default and set the default to whatever transition you last used. So if I wanted to set it to diamond iris, I could do that, but I don't. Lastly, let's just take a quick look at the audio. Audio effects are in the same places. Audio transitions are just fades, because really, what else are you going to do? And you have a couple of choices for audio filters, and any uh, audio unit plugins you install um, will be available in this menu too. So if you get some, if you buy some extras, uh, they'll show up here, and and it's just any audio unit. So if you're working with Waves, for example, which is one of the best, uh, in my opinion, uh, set of filters. Waves makes some great filters, very expensive filters, but nonetheless uh, wonderful. Um, they uh, uh, they will show up in this menu too, and you can use them in your Final Cut projects. So. What you've got here is a bunch of stuff. Um, if you want to, you know, if, if your sound is uh, too low, you can, you can level it up here. But you can also uh, use something like, a, uh, like an actual uh, boost. There are a couple ways you can boost things. You can compress the sound. You can use a limiter to, um, to try to bring up the lows without, without blowing out the sound. Because if you, move all, if you just move the sound up, because it varies, as you can see on the waveform, it, you know, it's not always soft, sometimes it's louder. So then everything gets louder, and if it gets too loud, then it's going to, you know, it's going to uh, go above uh, the limit, and your speakers are going to sound really, you know, it's going to sound like it's blowing out, because it is. So you don't want to do that. So a limiter and a compressor can help you do that. Of course, you lose some of the, uh, uh, I mean, it, when it's compressed, it, you've heard music where everything's the same volume, and not always the best thing. Um, you 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 can you can lose a little bit of of I don't know how to describe it necessarily, but the the quality it's just not it sounds a little I mean when you're whispering it shouldn't be really loud it shouldn't be as loud as uh, when you're talking, um, but compressing and limiting makes that 
So uh, everything's the same volume or closer. But if you need to bring up your sound, that's a good way to do it. Just don't overdo it. An EQ is another thing you can use to, I mean, you've probably seen this in iTunes or whatever, and you can choose your frequency that you want to boost or reduce. Um, this is often a good way to neutralize background noise. Uh, that's, so that's something you can use there. And, uh, and there are a whole bunch of other audio effects. We're not going to get into everything here, and we're not really going to get into how to use them, but there are a bunch of stuff you can use. Final Cut Pro also comes with a set of effects that are easier if you have someone um, talking into a microphone and you hear lots of P and D and B noises that are popping, um, that are causing air to hit the microphone in an unpleasant way. You can use the de popper. de is if S's are sounding too harsh. It'll try to remove those. Gain is a very simple plugin that will just boost the sound volume, but it, like anything, can blow things out if you put it up too loud. Um, you have more equalizers. You have an echo plugin, which makes it sound like you're echoing. There's lots of stuff you can experiment uh, with your audio, but for the most part, try to record good audio when you're bringing it in. Audio, video, video is something you can often work with in, in a lot more ways. Picture is oddly easier to correct than audio. Audio is tough. If you get noisy audio, it's going to be noisy. You can remove the noise, but then you're removing quality of the voice as well. So record, people don't think about audio very much with, when it comes to video. It's kind of an afterthought, and that's a big problem. Audio, when, if you think about watching a video, I guarantee you will turn that video off more. If, if the content is good, but the audio sucks, you won't watch it. And if you, but if you have a video where the video quality is not good and the content is, and the audio audio is also good, you're gonna you're gonna do that because you need to hear it. Unless of course it's you know like a silent film or something, in which case, then the video is probably paramount. But for the most part, pay attention to your audio when you record it, and you will not have to use many of these things, many of these tools to help correct anything, and you'll be able to do subtle corrections, and it will be great. You do not want to have to correct bad audio because it is not something that is easy to do. It is a lot of work and Final Cut is not going to be very helpful. So that's what we've got for Final Cut. Let's move on and take a look at how this works in Premiere. It's Premiere! We're in Premiere! Here is the same footage that you saw in Final Cut. Here are our files over here. This is all stuff you should be familiar with at this point. Um, not only because we've been doing it in Final Cut, but because we did it in Premiere in the past two days. So if I double click on this coffee cup adding cream clip thing, uh, you can see there's the footage in the viewer as we'd expect it. And here are our effects controls, very similar to Final Cut. I can scroll around uh, back and forth in the timeline up here just as I would there. And there's a little motion tab, very familiar. I'm going to turn on keyframing by clicking this toggle animation button, which looks to me like a stopwatch, I don't know. Um, and that turns it on and sets a keyframe in the first frame. And I'm going to move over here, set another keyframe using the diamond. That's also something you should see familiar. And then I can go ahead and change the position. How do I do that? Well, this is the horizontal position. And this is the vertical position. I'm just clicking and dragging. And now, when I play this clip, it moves. Now, we don't want that because that's stupid. So I'm going to get rid of it. Oh, but now our, <laughs> now our positions are not where we want them. Um, I don't remember what this was. Let's say that's what it... Nope. Oh, right. Probably 360. Yes? No? Come on, Premiere, show me something. I don't remember where we had it before. But... No. Let's try this. No. 480. Can we try that already? 520. Anyway, whatever. So it's going to stay there. <laughs> We're getting pretty close. Maybe it's 540. Ah, we got it. Okay. So now we can do other things like adjust the scale. We've seen this before. This is all the same as it was in Final Cut. These are not revolutionary features. This is just kind of how video editors do it in a lot of ways. You have some other stuff here that you may have not seen in Final Cut, but basically it's the same controls. If we want to add some special effects, you have your effects panel. If for some reason you cannot find your effects panel, you go to Window, choose Effects, and it will pop up on the left side over here. You can move it somewhere else if you think this is a stupid place for it because there's no room, but uh, you can also adjust it so there is more room. 
Now you have a lot of options and you'll probably find that these options are very similar to the options you had in Final Cut. You have, a, you have your keying options and look at that, we have our garbage mats. Same thing going on here. We have image controls and look, there's Colorista because I installed it. That took about 10 minutes to load there, so I just skipped over it for you. We've got Colorista very similarly to how we have it in Final Cut, and here we are seeing the constraints of space again. So I'm just moving that over so we have a little more room. Um, we need to get move this one over too so we have the room where we want it. Excellent. And you'll see you have your primary exposure, which we looked at before. Cool. Um, and you have your primary three-way. I'm not making a joke about this. The color correction tool works exactly the same as it does in Final Cut. So you have that nice consistency there. And it's being edited. It's very neat. That's uh, basically, there's no difference. It's the same thing. Um, so you can do your effects and do your color correction almost identically to how you do it in Final Cut. It's really great. Um, moving from video editor to video editor once you know the basics of each program because the plugins you use are either going to be identical because you purchased them or they're going to be the same just because there's really not a whole lot you can do with color correction um, beyond what is available. Um, and I mean, there are going to be obviously ones that are better than others, otherwise I wouldn't recommend a $300 plugin, but Essentially, they're going to work in the same way. There's not there's not some magic new paradigm that has been invented recently uh, that that uh, makes color correction easier or harder to figure out um, or or to perform or to whatever. And there are all sorts of effects that are similar in the same way, just like the garbage mat that we saw earlier. So when you're in Premiere doing these effects, it's going to be basically the same kind of stuff. Um, one thing that you might notice is different, is the audio mixer. And Premiere has a really uh, nice audio mixer in comparison to Final Cut. So you can make adjustments directly to your audio tracks in more, um, in, 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 in more meaningful ways uh, using this. And it works more like a piece of audio editing software. So in terms of, you know, what you're doing, um, with the audio, it's, it's just significantly better. So, Premiere, not that much different. You're pretty much doing the same stuff, moving around your timeline, adding effects, and so on. And so that's how you do it in Premiere. There's one thing I did forget to show you, though, and that's titles, and we're going to hop back on over to Final Cut to wrap that one up. And we're back in Final Cut. So making a title is really, really easy, and we're going to do this really, really fast because this lesson's getting way too long. So... See this little button here? This little film strip A button at the bottom of your viewer? You don't have that in your canvas. You only have it in your viewer. You click that and you get a bunch of extra stuff. You'd be surprised by how much fun things you can find. You can make a solid color. You can render a bunch of weird stuff in here like a membrane. Um, you can make shapes. You can add text. These are all your titles um, that you have available. Different kinds of titles. These are very simple. I like to use the one under Boris. Who thought it would be under Boris but Title 3D. That's because Boris is the company that makes it and has created this plugin for Final Cut, and it comes with Final Cut Pro. So, you make, uh, you you create one by just selecting it, and then you have a black screen, which is completely useless to you. Then you go into controls, and you'll see, oh wait a minute, there's a bunch of stuff. We're gonna ignore all of this because this is how you can like play with your titles afterwards. We don't need that. We're just gonna make a really simple one. I'm going to click this Title 3D, click for Options uh, button there. It takes a minute to initialize, probably a little bit less for those of you who are not using a slow laptop. And you choose, I want this to be like 72, and I want it to be in web things. No, thank you. Let's try this one. Coffee and cream. Okay. Actually, let's make that one nice long title. Now, that's probably not going to fit on the screen, so I'm going to select that make it a bit smaller, and you have all these tabs here. This is why I like Title 3D is because you have all these options. So this one is just, you know, how your text is formatted. This is your color. I'm going to make this white. It's actually white, just black because it's selected. Um, you can choose how opaque that color is. 
you want the title to be see-through, you can add an outline to it and adjust that outline as you please. You can add a drop shadow to your title so that it is uh, more visible on your video. So I'm going to hit apply. I'm fine with that. And then if I go back to video, you'll see this is updated to have a title in it. And I can drag that title anywhere under the timeline in the video department anyway. Clip it to what I want. And as you can see, now I have a title. Video. And that is how you make a title in Final Cut. Before we go, let's just take a quick look at how to do that in Premiere. In Premiere, there is a little bit more importance placed on titles than there is in Final Cut. Final Cut kind of hides it in that viewer little drop-down menu. But in Premiere, you have an entire menu item dedicated to titles. You click on that, uh, go to New Title, and we're going to do a still title, but you can do a roll or a crawl as well, or based on a template that you've created or someone else has created. But since we're doing stills, that's great. We've got it uh, set to these interesting dimensions. And uh, I'm going to name that title My Lovely Title. And so we have a title designer here and it's going to let me type, and I can choose all sorts of fonts, and this is actually, this is really quite great. My, oh uh, wait, coffee, am I spelling that right? I can't even see it. Coffee and cream, and this is using an interesting choice of fonts there. But as you can see, this is kind of like a, almost like a Photoshop type title thing, uh, designer, and you can choose from a lot of existing styles. We'll just start with this one and make a nice coffee and cream title there. Um, and you can scale it up and down. I mean, it's really significantly better than what Final Cut offers because Final Cut's uh, Boris plugin, which I do love, is out of date. I mean, they haven't updated. I, I Since I started using Final Cut, it's been pretty much the exact same thing. It may have been updated. I don't know. I can't tell. But it is an old title creator and Final Cut definitely has some other title tools. They have live type and stuff, but they have nothing. They don't do anything like this. This is pretty awesome. So you can go ahead and choose whatever the font you want here. You can choose all sorts of styles. You even get previews of what the fonts are in a nice way without uh, losing, you know, because some fonts are not um, are not uh, the best at at previewing because they are um, hard to see. Oh, my project just got saved, but let's make this a quickie and make the title the same as we had it before except black. I kinda like the black better so we're gonna keep that and you can see the title safe stuff that you set in your project already there it is very helpful. That's all you really need to do to design a title in Premiere but how do you add it to your project? Well you'll notice as soon as you make a new title it saves it into your asset browser or file browser or whatever. Um, so you don't actually, you can just close the window when you're done and then drag this file over on top of your video and all of a sudden, there's the title. And if you want to edit it again, you just double click and it will bring up the title browser again. And you can go ahead and edit your title. It's very neat, very useful, and you can create some really cool titles that way. So that is it. We are done, finally, of the, for the, with the effects and color correction lesson. Tomorrow, we are going to look at exporting your amazing edits out for the web and for DVD or whatever in lots of various ways. And hopefully, it will be significantly shorter than this lesson. Um, and that is all. We will see you soon, and thanks for learning with us.